Hey everyone, um, today we are going to work on gas law relationships, so we're going to take a pause from the Cornell notes and look at a new document that's called gas law relationships. Alright, so I have the FET simulation that you guys did, the, the gas law um, simula simulation that you guys did last week, and we're going to look at a couple of things. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm adding particles. Um, I pick 55 because my favorite number is 5. Um, and I'm trying to keep temperature constant, and I'm going to have a collision counter because we know that pressure is the same as collisions. You can also see pressure being counted over here. But what I see is that when I have 55 particles, there are 40 collisions, and the pressure is at about 6.2, 6.3. Now I'm changing my volume. going to count the collisions again. My pressure is now at 13, and there's 60 collisions. So I changed volume, and I noticed that it impacted the pressure. I'm gonna do that same thing again just to see. Let's make the box even bigger, so more, now even a massive volume. My pressure is lower, like 5.2, 5.6. Uh, hitting that six range, but only 35 collisions. So here's that gas law um, relationship worksheet that we're gonna look at, and the goal is to define the variables and look at relationships and draw particle pictures. So first we're gonna look at pressure and volume. Here's, let's describe what they mean. If there is low pressure, that means there are less collisions and softer collisions. Whereas high pressure means more collisions or hard or aggressive collisions. Um, whereas volume is all about the size of the box, right? That's what I was changing. So we had a big box or space for the gas particles or a low volume would be a small box or space. So when I draw my particle drawings, low pressure versus high pressure, we are going to use arrows to show pressure. So for pressure, what we're going to look for, if, it, if you want to indicate that there's low pressure or the pressure is decreasing, we're going to point the arrows in. Arrows point in. So I might have something like this. Maybe they're all kind of just pointing towards the middle of the box. Whereas if we have something that's high pressure, meaning lots of collisions, we're going to have the arrows point out. So maybe they're touching or pointing to the sides of the container, right, in the general direction. So a higher pressure has the arrows pointing at the sides of the container. A low pressure has the arrows pointing in. Volume is much easier, less thinking. You're, if you're trying to show a change in volume, something with high volume will have a big box to draw the particles in. Something with a smaller volume will have a small box. And let's think about what we saw in that simulation. Um, what I first noticed was I was changing the volume. I made the volume go smaller, and ultimately that made the pressure go up or the number of collisions go up, right? When we made the pressure, when, when we made the box smaller, um, the pressure, the number of collisions went up. Well, that makes sense, right? If we give these particles a smaller space to bounce around, they're more likely to collide. And then the same was true. When I increased the volume, the pressure went down. This is called an inverse or an indirect relationship. Okay, so here's how I remember it. The president and the vice president, oops, try that again, want this guy. The president and the vice president always disagree. They do opposites. All right, here's another video clip. So I'm putting in um, my particles again. 55, same as before. And this time I want to keep the volume the same. So it's not going to change. And I'm going to just count my collisions just like we did before. Notice the pressure is right at like 6.8. It's hopping around a lot. That's fine. But in the 6 range, 27 collisions. Now I'm going to heat it up. As you can see, the temperature is rising. Notice that the particles are beginning to move faster and faster. The pressure is in the 14 range, and there were 51 collisions. More temperature, more collisions. What about if I do the opposite and really cool it down? Again, volume's not changing in this one. Notice my pressure is steadily dropping. Look at those particles moving slower and slower in slow motion. 
And once I let it get cold enough, I'm gonna count the collisions. Look at how slow those particles are moving. My pressure is right around two. And there's a total of 27 collisions. So slow particles when it's cold, lower pressure. All right, so on this next page, we're gonna look at the relationship between temperature and pressure. Um, and so a couple of vocab things. Low temperature means low average kinetic energy And that's slow speeds, right? Average kinetic energy is the speeds that the the speed that the particles are moving, and we noticed that when they were when the temperature was uh, low, they were moving slower. Whereas high temperature would be high average kinetic energy. And fast speeds. So for temperature, we're still going to use arrows like we did with pressure, but now it's going to be the length of the arrow. So a low temperature, we're going to use short arrows. So again, I'm not really caring about what direction these are pointing right now because I'm just focusing on temperature. So notice I have nice short arrows, whereas high temperature... Got my five particles again. That's going to be long arrows. And again, I'm not too concerned about the direction they're pointing, but they're going to be much longer. Is Ms. Butler going to bust out a ruler and see that if you're telling me that the temperature went up, that your arrows got longer? No, I'm not going to bust out a ruler, so make it obvious, right? I can clearly see that between here and here, my arrows got longer. We already talked about pressure, so all I did for this page was copy what we wrote before. That pressure means less, low, excuse me, low pressure means less collisions, soft collisions, high pressure, more collisions, hard collisions. And then we know arrows point in when we're trying to show low pressure, and they point out when we're trying to show higher pressure. Let's talk relationship. On this guy, what we did is I increased my temperature, right? We heated it up and we noticed that there were more collisions. The pressure went up when we did that. And then when I cooled it down, those particles move slower. And if they're moving slower, there's going to be less collision. So the pressure will drop. So this is a direct relate, excuse me, direct relationship. When we increase the temperature, particles move faster, faster, faster because they have a higher average kinetic energy, which means they collide more and um, more often and harder with the walls of the container, which increases the pressure. All right, last one. I already put my 55 particles in and I'm holding pressure constant. So my pressure is at 6.4. Notice when I heat it up, it makes the box expand. And when I cool it down, it makes the box um, shrink in size, right? So picture a flexible container, something like a balloon. This would not be like a glass flask or a beaker or anything like that. This is something where the volume can change like a balloon. All right, so last one, um, we're looking at now the relationship between temperature and volume. And again, this is when pressure is the same. We already defined these words. So I just copied and pasted low average kinetic energy and slow speeds for low temp, high average kinetic energy, high speeds. We show short arrows and long arrows for temperature. Um, for volume, we said it's the amount of room the particles have. So a big box or amount of space versus small. Oops, I flipped these. Let's try that again. Low volume would be small box, high volume would be big box. So low volume, again, we're good here, small box for your particles to be in, whereas high volume gets a bigger box. So let's talk relationship. On this guy, we were changing the temperature, and the first thing I did was heat it up, and that means the average kinetic energy of the particles um, increases, so the particles move faster, faster, faster. And what that does is it causes the volume to expand as long as the container is flexible, right? Picture those particles colliding with the sides of the container and pushing it out. I picture like a bounce house, right? If I have some kids jumping in the bounce house, and then all of a sudden they start jumping faster and faster and faster, what happens to the sides of the bounce house? It kind of um, bows out a little, right? As those kids start jumping faster and faster, they push the volume of the container. When we cooled it down, on the other hand, when the particles had a lower average kinetic energy, they were moving slow motion, that caused the volume to go down. Notice both of these variables are doing the same thing. That is called a direct relationship. 
So I'm hoping that now you understand how to define or what we look for to define pressure, volume, and temperature, how to draw particle drawings where we show pressure with where the direction of the arrows, we show volume with the size of the box we draw particles in, and we show temperature with the length of the arrows. And now you can also tell me about the relationship between pressure and volume, right? The president and the vice president disagree. You can also tell me the relationship between um, temperature and pressure. They do agree, so treasurer, treasurer agrees with president, right? Temperature goes up, pressure goes up. And you should also be able to tell me about the relationship between temperature and volume, which is a direct relationship. So the treasurer and the vice president agree. One goes up, the other goes up, and vice versa. Um, so those are the relationships. Um, those, And then you just saw all three pages. So if, if I went too quickly, you can go back and make sure you have everything filled out. Nice work today. Um, good luck on your progress check today.